So welcome all of you. I am Nitya Gopal Das. I'll be your Gita guide for this session, what you have registered for. And first of all, I would like to congratulate all of you that this point of time, you might have been doing other activity. First of December, 7 p.m., there might have been some other engagement for you to engage in. Studies, working, cooking, or some other things. But rather, you have chosen to dedicate this time to study and to understand Bhagavad Gita. So it means a lot to all of us. And congratulations to all of you to finding this time in your life to understand the most important aspect of your existence. As all of us knows that we all come across different junctions in our life and we do not know which path to take. And at that point of time, the guidance is most important because it can just take your life into different direction altogether. The guidance which we get from Bhagavad Gita acts like a GPS which explains how, what and the when of life. So we'll be discussing this these sessions, almost 10 sessions after this and we'll be dwelling into most important aspects of Bhagavad Gita. So before that, I would like to ask all of you to please tell us about yourself, your name and the place you're joining from. So I would like to ask you in the to type on the chat section your name and the place you are joining from. We want to know all of you so that each of us knows each other. We want to create a synergical effect in this group so that we can learn with the help of each other. So we have from Orlando, we have Parveen Puranam from Phoenix, Manjunanji from Orlando. We have Sai from Boston, Achita from Miami, Ranita from Tampa, Excuse Welcome me, Venika sir. Ji. How do we uh, how do we type in the chats? <clears throat> yeah, if you go to more, if you find a chat, you can type it there. Okay. So we have Pawan Ji, we have Hema Ji. I think Lakshmi Ji can't hear. I think everybody is able to hear. Lakshmi Ji, I would like to see if you can see your audio settings, you would be able to hear us. We have Asmita ji from Virginia, Kushbu from Orlando. Welcome Arjun ji. Welcome Alkal ji, Priyanka ji, Sashang ji. We have so many beautiful people joining us here from different parts of mostly Central Florida and some other part of the uh, US, United States. Yes. We have Kajal ji, Raju ji from New Jersey, Ramesh ji from, yes, we have somebody from Tirupati. We have Pari ji, we have Khyati ji from Ohio. So we have people from all over the place and we have people of all age today here. So welcome all of you. So today uh, I would like to start this small discussion. First of all, I would like to ask all of you to please write your name on the chat section. Uh, in, I, I mean your rename, yourself as a rename the, by the name you have registered in these sessions. By the name which you have registered in the session, I would ask you to please rename yourself so that we can, it will be helpful for us in taking attendance when we do the certification program. So this will be a certified program and here we'll be having a test after the each session and after the whole course. And the 75% attendance is compulsory for the certification. And also <clears throat> we would like to mention here that these topics would be from Bhagavad Gita, mostly five important topics. So there are five important topics which Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita. We'll be talking about these five topics divided into 10 sessions. And today we'll be discussing the first program known as the aim of life. We'll be discovering what is the purpose of our life, what is the aim of our life. So without wasting much of our time, I'll directly jump into the one video which will be setting the tone for our session today. <clears throat> Remarks in conversation with Werner Heisenberg. 
Albert Einstein famously remarked in a conversation with Werner Heisenberg, he said, you know, in the West, we've built a beautiful ship and in it, it has all the comforts. But actually, the one thing that it doesn't have is a compass. And that's why it doesn't know where it's going. This paradox of our times was propounded by the Dalai Lama when he said we have wider freeways, but narrower viewpoints. We have taller buildings, but shorter tempers. Will Smith said that we spend money we haven't earned on things we don't need to impress people we don't like. And it's phenomenal how the same technology that brings us close to those who are far away takes us far away from the people that are actually close. 30 billion WhatsApp messages are sent per day, but 48% of people say that they feel lonelier in general. The paradox of our times is that we have more degrees but less sense, more knowledge but less judgment, more experts but less solutions. It was Martin Luther King who said that the irony of our times is that we have guided missiles but misguided men. Have you ever found it perplexing that we've been all the way to the moon and back but we struggle to start a conversation across the road or across the train and it's amazing that Bill Gates was known as the top earner in 2015 with a wealth of 79.2 billion but one in four ceos claim to be struggling from depression do we actually thrive off this paradox is it that this paradox actually makes the media interesting it's what makes journalism interesting or what makes politics interesting it's what makes television interesting is this paradox actually what we feed off and what we live off and what we talk about and discuss in our circles doesn't it seem that we've tried to clean the air but polluted our soul we've split the atom but not our prejudice and we're aiming for higher incomes but we have lower morals so i'm hearing you ask how do we bring a change how do we dissect this paradox that exists in our lives and it starts by us each of us pressing pause pressing reset and then pressing play again taking a moment to become more conscious taking a moment to become more aware taking a moment to really reflect on the consequence the implications of a misplaced word of an unnecessary argument that we all know we didn't need to have or to speak to someone just slightly differently in a different tone in a different voice in a different empathy with a different perspective just to really connect with people on a different level. This thinking out loud started from Albert Einstein and I'll track back to him when he actually said that the problems we have today can't be solved with the same thinking we used when we once created them. So actually we need to research alternative teachings. We need to deep down dig into those ancient books of wisdom. We need to go back to understanding if there's anything written in those creased pages of time that can actually reveal more knowledge and more wisdom of how we can transform our experience of light today. Otherwise, this paradox means that every step forward we take, we're taking three backwards every time. So, at this point of time, I would like to ask from any one of you and I would request you to please open your video when you please speak. So something, what you learned from this video, what struck you? What is your realization? What stayed with you after you watched this video? Anybody would like to share? Be on the right path, at least be, be, do the right things. Yes, doing the right thing. Thank you very much. Yes, Arjun, you have something to say? We have a lot of people, but they don't like give solutions. Yes, we have people, but they don't, mm -hmm. don't give solution. Yeah. Thank you. Like, keep persevering. Praveenji, you have something to say? How about we say <clears throat> we are comfortably miserable? Yeah, we are comfortably miserable in our lives. <laughs> we are becoming comfortable with our misery. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Beautiful point. Need to focus more. We need to focus more. Focus, yes. So we want these sessions to be interactive because by interaction we learn from each other. I would request all of you to please start opening up. If you want, you can write in the chat section what you learned from this small snippet. And
So now we would be doing one exercise, small exercise to begin with. Now I want to ask from all of you that what do you think you want to achieve in your life? So many times we are leading our life, but we really think that what do we want to achieve from our life? So any tangible object which you want to achieve, and that is your goal to achieve in your life. It may be something which you can possess, physically you can possess, and you can have it with yourself. So I would request all of you to please think and either type on the chat section, either you can speak out on the audio that what is that thing which intangible object you're looking for to achieve in your life. The thing that I would like to achieve is to play the piano. I'm sorry? So the thing that I would like to achieve is to play the piano. Oh, playing the piano, learning piano. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Praveenji. You can just keep unmuting yourself and keep saying one after another. Uh, I didn't, uh, sorry, I, I mistakenly didn't uh, uh, took the hand down. But uh, I, I will say I want to be useful to others, you know, useful to others. Being helpful to others, useful yeah. to others. Helping in nature, helping person. I want to be happy when I grow up. Yes, you want to be happy, but what do you want to achieve? Our question is what we want to achieve, something tangible. As a mother, I want to raise a, a very nice, uh, good, kind, next generation of child. You want to become a good mother? I, yeah, I'm trying to be the best. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to raise a good generation for sure. Good mother. A responsible politician. Yes. I want to swim for one hour without drowning. You want to swim without drowning? Swim without drowning. To be successful. successful. Without drowning for one oh. hour. Okay. So any tangible object. I'm looking for something. Let's say you want to achieve some, have some Tesla, you want to have a big bungalow, you want to go on cruise. Something which you I want to become a successful architect. Okay. To become an architect. Be good at soccer. Be good at soccer. Earn one million three years by twenty-five. Yes. Becoming a millionaire. Okay. Yes, I I'm getting beautiful be answers now. I want this. I feel our mother are good in own ways. It is a responsible next generation. Be knowledgeable. I want to become the most flexible as. Uh, I want to become the most flexible as girl in town. Successful businessman. Okay, you want to become a successful. No, flexible. You want to become a success or oh, flexible? Okay. Be flexible. I want to become an artist. Artist. You want to become an artist. Uh, anybody else would like to say something? What they want to achieve in their life? Is it time for them to speak out and think like this here? I want to become a soldier. Become a soldier. Okay, I will like that. Be a soldier. I want to become a doctor. Become a doctor. So basically, want to become a good person. Want to become some doctor, soldier, or things like that. Yeah. Anything else? 
I have so many. I want questions. to. I want to be a vet. You want to be a vet. Vet. A vet, like a vet, like daycares of like animals, oh. like pets that are not good. You like Pravinji like to have Bugatti. Bugatti around that is Pravinji's desire. Interesting. Anybody else would like to explain, say something? What that? What do they want in their life? I want to go all over. Go all over the world. Go all over the world. No, no, like, no. like all over the social media. You want to become famous all over social media. Yeah. Becoming famous. Uh huh. Uh huh. I want to become into a famous teacher. Yes, teacher. So we have all these teacher. points here. Have... So now I would like to ask from all of you. Whoever has said that they want to learn piano, they want to help, they want to become a helper, they want to be a good mother, they want to want to become successful, become an architect. Have millionaires have million in their account, become knowledgeable, become responsible politician, have cat, travel all over the world, become very famous. Let's imagine, by the blessings of the Lord, you have achieved what you wanted to achieve. Who wanted to become millionaire, they have become billionaire. Who wanted to become an architect, they have become architect. They have become soldier, doctor, whatever they wanted to become, whatever they wanted to have. now they have it with themselves so now imagine how you would be experiencing your life what you expect the life to become when you have achieved or when you have received and when you have become somebody like what you desire close your eyes and imagine you have achieved it what would be your state like how you would be experiencing life at this point of time so how you would be experiencing life what would be your state like and what do you think you might have achieved by possessing all these things in your life i would be joyful joyful yes you'll be happy and joyful perfect anybody else i would become proud become proud joyful i will become up. excited excited what else we have so many feel good here. about myself feel good about myself so with joy and pride so now helping the world use it to help the world so how you would experience of life once you are helping the world I want the I want the uh, feeling component. How would you feel after helping the world? Uh, feel happy. Feel happy. Feel happy. Feel. Feel blissful. Feel excited. Yes. So now we have got all these points. Basically, what we want to achieve in our life is the column B. we want to become happy we want to become joyful we want to become excited we want to become blissful and we want to have profound joy in our life confident yes elated content yes beautiful synonyms now content confident so this is what we actually look for in our life we look to become happy we want to become joyful we want to become excited we want to become blissful and we want to become content in our life so this is what ultimately we look for but somebody think after learning piano i'm going to become happy somebody think by becoming successful i'm going to become happy somebody think by becoming knowledgeable i'll become content somebody think by becoming responsible politician i'll become joyful ultimately what we want to become is this column b and we're thinking in our mind that by achieving this we'll have that so let us see how much truth it is how much is the reality to this point of understanding 
the first session would be in discovering the aim of life so aim of life is to become happy that is what we are understanding here now aim of life is not to achieve all these kind of things so now this is what we want to achieve we want to achieve a become very powerful become very big politician wants to have good family wants to have degrees want to become doctor politician architect or whatever you just name it we are here so but have you come across many people who may have a lot of followers in their life but still they feel lonely recently i was seeing one post from a very famous celebrity youtube celebrity sandeep maheshwari he has 27 million followers with him ah is tale po illa and nan phone iskoda that for he has 27 million subscribers followers in youtube and other platforms but he said i am fighting depression from last 3 years after covid ended so although we may have so many followers in our life but still we may feel lonely we may have so many gifts in our life we may have so many excited surprises in our life but still we may remain unsatisfied we may have wonderful resources we may have lot of achievement we may have degrees we may have everything in our life but still frustrated and although we may have all the resources all everything in our life but still we may feel hopeless so what is this paradox we are thinking by achieving all these things we are going to become happy but there are many many people who have achieved what we want to achieve but still they are not happy they have achieved they have become doctor they have become politician there are so many successful people in our in our life in in our world we see but if you ask them have they really become happy after achieving all of that the answer would be still i'm searching for it on the contrast we have so many people in our life in our situation around us wherein they live in very humble situation in the countryside they don't have much resources they don't have so many followers they don't even have the facebook account they don't even have a youtube account for themselves they don't have much money they live off the ground they live in a very humble state but the kind of smile they can have on their faces even a millionaire cannot have it the kind of innocence the kind of deep connection they have among themselves is very very profound when i was visiting yamunotri a place in the himalayan region their people have very very less basic amenities about life they don't even have proper houses but the amount of happy the kind of happy they are and the degree of happiness contentment they have even the people who visited there although they were millionaires were ashamed to see how happy they are we keep complaining about what we don't have but they were enjoying what they have in their life so what we are thinking that after achieving after becoming after possessing something i am going to become happy but there are people who have already achieved they are not happy and there are people who have not achieved it but they are happy so what happens there was one crow and this crow was thinking himself to be very beautiful till the time he look at the mirror after looking at the mirror and after seeing how black he looks the crow become very disgusted and became very unhappy so he goes to the swan my dear swan you are so beautiful you are white in color so you must be very happy because i am black you are white you possess more beauty you must be happy the swan says yes i was thinking that i am happy till the time i saw parrot parrot because after seeing the parrot i understood that this parrot has multicolor this petal has beautiful peacock beautiful beak and beautiful different complexion of color on his body so after that i became very sad that parrot be is more happier then the crow goes to parrot and parrot says so to parrot my dear parrot you must be very happy because you are so colorful parrot says yes i was thinking i am so happy that i am most beautiful till the time i saw peacock 
because peacock not only have all those beautiful color on our body peacock become so jubilant we can just be, just pull out all the feathers and just dance in the rain and become look so pretty so beautiful everybody wants to have selfie with the peacock with the, all the feathers on now the crow thinks okay the most happiest is peacock then the crow goes to peacock and asks my dear peacock you must be very happy because everybody says so peacock say see i i'm so restricted to this place in the zoo i can't really have that freedom but whenever i see the crow yourself i become so jealous that this crow can go anywhere without any restriction and there is no and there is so happy the crow is the crow is thinking son is happy son is singing parrot is happy parrot is singing peacock is happy and peacock is singing crow is happy so it means we just keep comparing ourselves to different positions and realizing that the person in other position is more happier we think let me achieve this but when we go there we realize that there is no happiness even here so what is this paradox this paradox is, is beautifully explained by the von dyer one of the very big american philosopher he says most people are searching for happiness they are looking for it they are trying to find it in someone or something outside of themselves that is the fundamental mistake happiness is something that you are and it comes from the way you think so what is he saying that happiness is not coming something outside of you the happiness is going to come something which you are in your own essence if you can realize yourself the way you think the way you carry yourself the way you perceive world that becomes the source of your happiness or distress so the lai lama says the basic thing is that everyone wants happiness no one wants suffering and happiness mainly comes from our own attitude rather than from external factors if your own mental attitude is correct even if you remain in hostile atmosphere you will feel happy so he is not defining happiness as being dependent on some people or some situation happiness is something which comes from your own attitude so what is this now where does the happy real happiness comes from it is said that the real happiness comes from being in the very essence of your reality when you are connected to yourself when you have access to the deep treasure in your own heart which is a abundant source of happiness that is known as spirituality and that is can really gives us happiness the thing we want to achieve is only connected to the body the people you want to become connected to the ego the we want to become so knowledgeable connected to the in, connected to the intellect but the real happiness comes by connecting to my own self connecting to my own source and that is known as spirituality the real happiness comes from spirituality so now different people have different version of spirituality so now what according to all of you the spirituality is what do you all think what comprises spirituality what do you all think what comprises spirituality what is really being spiritual means feel blissful and uh, feel uh, blissful. yeah and uh, live in present living in present yes living yeah. in present living in yeah. present spirituality thankful yeah. to thankful to the god whatever he has given to us beautiful gratitude yeah. basically gratitude being grateful to the god very nice being connected to the things around us beautiful connected to things which are around us yes we have to be happy for what we have beautiful beautiful happy what we have being grateful be content yes i have so many points here meditation <clears throat> david is saying the meditation is happiness meditation is spirituality 
to be connected to oneself. Meditation. Anything else connected to oneself in a dimension. Living with awareness. Becoming aware. Aware. Mm -hmm. Being aware of reality. Be blessed by but what you have. Doing seva by practicing something. Yes. Yes, beautiful point. I want more of it. Doing seva, soul conscious, or connected to soul. You have more point. Grateful for what you have. Anybody else? What the real spirituality means to all of you? What seva? Seva means service. Doing service to humanity, doing service to other people. That is seva. Bhakti. So isn't it sometimes spirituality means that to help other, helping other people, being kind to other, yes. being generous. Yes. Isn't it? Being generous. True. Not hurting other people. Minding your own business or reading Bible. That is also spirituality for people. Reading text, doing bhakti, going to temple is spirituality for some people. For me, I want to say something. Uh, listening to you gives me a feeling of spirituality. You're putting tilak. It feels very um, divine, divinity. So I am feeling spiritual that way. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Sitting home and uh, having your darshan and getting, yeah, that's. Thank you. So to be honest, Glory is saying to be honest and tapping on the spirit, knowing the real to meaning, belonging, belongingness, not reacting to situation, Spirit. sacred. Being honest, yes, I found, I got the point. Being honest, it is spirituality, yes. I missed the last point, what was that? Tapping on the spirit, Satchidananda, not reacting to situation, no harm to self or other, harmless, not hurting other or oneself, not hurting other or oneself. Knowing many stories about the God. Oh, knowing many stories, yes. Knowing the stories. Yes. So now if you see, whatever we have gathered information, what we think the spirituality is, can be categorized into three different sections. So why do you think I have categorized them into three different sections? There is a reason for that. If you see the category where helping other, being kind to other, being generous, not hurting to oneself or other people, being honest, that is really not spirituality. That is known as morality. Morality, yes. Being moral and being honest and being generous, being moral, not being spiritual. Living in present, power of now, Connected to yourself, reading Bible, knowing the stories, trying to understand philosophy, trying to understand Bhagavad Gita. That's all known as philosophy, not as spirituality. And again, grateful to God, doing meditation, doing service, connected to soul, doing bhakti, going to temple. That is also is not as spirituality. Mm -hmm. That is known as religiousness. So what is in what is then spirituality? What is spirituality? The spirituality is the combination of all these three things. Mm. So this is very interesting. How 
how the spirituality is a combination of all these three things. The reason being, we can't say I am spiritual but not being moral. So morality forms the foundation of being spiritual. Morality means the foundation itself. Before becoming spiritual, I have to follow the basic guidelines of as being human. So that is what Krishna Arjuna was following the highest level of morality in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. And then he became eligible to understand the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita. So the philosophy becomes the more higher understanding. It grows on the moral principles. And then when the philosophy has found is evolved principles to practice in our day-to-day -day life, that becomes the religiousness. So philosophy can be compared to the theory and the religious aspect can be, can be compared to the practical of the theory. So even one element is missing, that is not really spirituality. That becomes something else. So it is said that if we become if we have philosophy but without morality, we speak big, big things but we don't follow the basic commandments. It becomes hypocrisy. We speak something else, we act something some, some, some other way. Like we have different people. Like people of very high status in their life. Judge, DGP and some people like that. They were arrested in gang rape, in murdering people, sex trafficking, mercy killing, things kind of things. So they have philosophy, but they don't have the morality. So when there is philosophy without religion, let's say you speak big, big thing again, there is no practical application of that philosophy. It becomes mental speculation. Just keep on thinking. They say, act, knowing, not acting. Somebody may know a lot of things, but if you don't act on what you know, it becomes difficult to bring into the, the, the changes. It doesn't come. Changes come when you act on the what you know. So just keep on speculating which came first, hen or egg. Just keep on thinking about it. It doesn't really going, not going to make any difference in that in that way. But when there is religion without philosophy, I am very fanatic about my religion. It simply becomes fanatism. It is nothing but being fanatical about what your principles are, like jihad for that matter. Once there was a couple from India was traveling in Middle East. They were very afraid. So in a car, they found out two people having their face covered. And they stopped the car and br brought this person out and asked, okay, what is your religion? He says, my religion is, my religion is, I'm Muslim. But he was Hindu. He was from India. Then he said, okay, chant some verses from Quran. Then he starts chanting, Yada idahi dharmasya glani bhavati bharataha paritanaya sadhunam vinashaya chaduskritam. He starts chanting all the Bhagavad Gita shlokas. And then the, this person says, Okay, go, go. I know you are a Muslim. And the wife of that man got shocked. She said, You didn't speak anything from the Quran. You speak everything from the Bhagavad Gita. Then why did this person let you go? Then this person says, if this person ever studied Quran, ever seen Quran, he would have never become terrorist. So we fight at the name of religion because we don't know what is written in the religious text. Just because we become fanatic and some people with their own vested interest have infused or brainwashed us that is really not going to work out. That is not real spirituality. So now, without if you are moral, but without philosophy, again, you won't maintain, you won't be able to maintain your moral principles for a long time. What's the higher reason of being moral? Why I have to become moral? Why I have to remain moral? So philosophy gives us a firm background to be moral and application of philosophy find its place in religious practices. So philosophy gives, helps 
in becoming moral and stand for our for your values and the application of philosophy becomes religious practices so how do we learn them is very simple morality we learn from our elders from our teachers from our guides the teachers help other do donations put the plants things like that and we learn religiousness from our traditions we belong to different traditions we diwali we celebrate christmas we celebrate geeta jayanti which is going to come on 22nd of december we celebrate eid so all these different rituals we 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 learn from our parents we learn from our tradition but it is philosophy who nobody teaches us and which is the most important to remain moral and religious so it is philosophy which we will be focusing on these sessions we'll be sharing five fundamental principles from bhagavad gita in the next 10 sessions and these uni- these principles are known as universal principles when i say universal principles it means these principles does not change with time place and circumstances so people from all across in different domains have read bhagavad gita have derived benefit from bhagavad gita like albert einstein used to read bhagavad gita like we have the mahatma gandhi used to read bhagavad gita there are many many hollywood actor who reads bhagavad gita so people from different domains so gita is not a hindu text it is not a text from india which is only meant for indians which is only meant for hindus it is meant for everybody who is a human being because these universal principle does not change with time does not change with place and does not change with circumstances like for an example 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 so when we say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 was the 2 plus 2 not equal to 4 100 years back it was after 100 years it will be 2 plus 2 equal to 4 in different places okay in mars it would change in african amazon forest it would change or it would change according to circumstances if i'm living in democratic countries 2 plus 2 will will be equal to 5 if i'm living in the communist country communist government 2 plus 2 will become 3 no it does not change like that similarly the bhagavad gita principles the the principles what krishna teaches in bhagavad gita is not meant only for one class of people it is giving the principles of life the principles of life about the life itself and each one of us share the same commonality that we are living and the living experience is same emotions are same challenges are same difficulties are same if it rains it rains for everybody not that it won't rain for hindus it won't rain for muslim it won't rain for christian if it is sunshine in the city everybody would be enjoying its benefit if there is snow snow is for everyone we may call sun with different names but that does not mean the sun changes sun remains same we may call with different names the name may change the god's name may change the the articulation of the principles may change but the core remains same and these core principles are taught in bhagavad gita so that is what what we wanted to discuss with you before we start diving into the hardcore topics of bhagavad gita that what is that we are going to learn from bhagavad gita we are going to learn the universal principles which can be applied in anybody's life in any situation in any circumstances so now we will be moving toward the last portion of our session that is known as quiz we'll be having small quiz on the topic what we just discussed and after that we would have question answer session anybody who have any questions will be taking up question answers after this so what is the real purpose of life to become billionaire to go for a world tour to live in a luxurious place palace or to become happy to become happy i'm happy become happy happy come happy to become happy 
all of you have got it right the purpose of life is to become happy let us move to the next question where does the real happiness comes from by becoming by famous spirituality 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 yes all of you have become <coughs> super knowledgeable now by spirituality we become happy okay let us move to the third question how can i become spiritual by all meditation <laughs> by reading bhagavad gita by becoming a good human being all of the above all of, all of, all of the above. above all of the above yes we become spiritual by all of the above does spiritual principles change with time no no no, no. no. no it does not change with time no last question is does everyone have different spiritual principles no 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 the answer is no for everyone spiritual principles remain same its application may change but principles yeah. remain same can you elaborate on this yeah so the spiritual principles i mean to say that when like a weather forecast mm -hmm. it remains same for everyone okay weather mm -hmm. forecast is for the whole city not mm -hmm. for the people living according to different ethnicities similarly mm -hmm. the lord has created this creation there is a mm -hmm. creation the principles of that universe is same Right. when sun rises sun rises for everyone okay. when it rains it rains for everyone the universal principles does not change on who is applying on them mm -hmm. for an example the h2o mm -hmm. the principle is if you have two hydrogen atom and if you have one oxygen atom it mm -hmm. would become h2o right anybody from any class male female of any age of any ethnicity of any religion do this experiment will find water similarly anybody who applies these principles in their life the spiritual principles they would see changes they would they would see transformation mm -hmm. our our life itself becomes a laboratory to apply those principles and in the laboratory of life the results will be same mm -hmm. that will be transforming to a better human being so that is how we say the principles yeah. remain the same thank you i hope this clarifies yes thank you so now we'll be open for questions and answers so anybody have any doubts any questions related to the topic what we discuss or anything in general Oh. About the course, about anything you want to discuss, we're open for the Q and A for the next few minutes. Will we be doing all the uh, chapters of Bhagavad Gita, or few chap like few chapters, or what? Yeah. So what we'll be doing is we'll be covering the five most important five topics what Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita. Oh. So Krishna speaks about five topics in the Bhagavad Gita. We'll be discussing these five topics into eight se ten sessions, and after this, in the level two, we would be having the elaborate discussion on them on each chapter. So we want to give you the bird eye view on the whole summary of Bhagavad Gita, so that once you know those principles, you can apply those principles and you can learn Gita at your own pace. So we want to create that interest in all of you, sir. Can you tell again one I one more? Gita. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would. I would like. Uh, can you tell again? Spirituality means morality, philosophy, and what's the third thing? I missed it. Philosophy, religiousness, and is morality. philosophy, morality, and religiousness. 
So do we get the opportunity to uh, learn slokas as well or the only the like regarding the only scriptural thing? So we'll be learning, we'll be chanting few slokas, some topics would have slokas directly from Bhagavad Gita. So we'll be chanting them. Like in the next session, we'll be covering some slokas. In the next session, we'll be covering some, some slokas like this. So so we'll have some sloka chanting, but our mostly thing would be understanding the essence of slokas, not slokas. only <coughs> chanting the slokas. Yeah, chanting with the explanation. Yes. Thank you. Anybody Sir, else? Uh, yes, Adya has some questions. I have the Bhagavan Gita book, sir. So can I use it? Yes, please use it. Please use it. Please start reading it. So okay. we'll be concluding here. Uh, we'll meet you again next time, next week on the same day. And understanding the higher topics of Bhagavad Gita. And the next topic would be finding your lost self. That would be the topic next time. So till then time, again we'll meet in the next session. Thank you very much. Namaste. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Namaste. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. 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 How many?